welcome to Strike Stroke. My name is Dr. Mekdas. Today we'll talk about small vessel occlusive disease. When we're talking about small vessel occlusive disease, we need to identify which vessel we're talking about. So in the brain, the territories that are at risk of small vessel disease are internal capsule, basal ganglia, thalamus, and pons. The reason is that these areas are supplied by small arteries that branch off of large arteries and these small arteries generally known as perforators. For example, we have the lenticular striate arteries coming off of the middle cerebral artery perforating into the basal ganglia internal capsule. Another example would be perforating arteries of the posterior cerebral artery that supplies the thalamus. Also, perforating arteries of the basal artery that supplies the pons, also known as pontine perforators. How does small vessel disease cause stroke? The main process is called lipohyalinosis. This process is characterized by thickening, weakening, and degeneration of the small vessels, eventually leading to the vessel occlusion. Once the vessel is occluded, the area that this vessel supplies will die, leading to small vessel stroke. Another cause of small vessel disease or small vessel stroke is called microarthroma, which really means plaque formation, but it is within the small vessels that we're talking about. Another is small clot that comes from the heart or large vessel can cause occlusion in this area leading to small vessel stroke, but in this case we really have to put the big picture together to say it is an embolic source. Small vessel strokes occur subcortically and they refer to as lacuna stroke. So lacun by definition meaning small cavities. So for us to say this is a lacuna stroke, one, we have to say it by location. It has to be subcortical involving the areas we talked about, basal ganglia, internal capsule, thalamus and pons. It also has to be based on size. The stroke has to be less than 15 millimeter in diameter for it to be called a lacuna stroke. Most of the time, because of the size being small, small versus stroke or lacuna strokes are without their symptoms unless they affect critical area such as internal capsule which is a motor strip and the patient can have weakness. But over time these silent lacuna strokes can have the additive effects such as movement disorder or cognitive dysfunction. How do we avoid small vessel stroke or small vessel disease? The ideal scenario is primary prevention, and if that's not possible, we move on to secondary prevention with risk factor modification. What are risk factors that lead to small vessel occlusive disease? We can talk about that in the next episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this information useful. In the next episode, we'll talk about the difference between primary and comprehensive stroke centers. Always remember to dial 911 if you or someone near you suddenly see, can't speak, can't walk, or can't feel, let the operator know that you or someone near you might be having a stroke so that you or the individual near you can be transported to the nearby comprehensive or primary stroke center for rapid stroke analysis and tailored treatment.